that you can use it standalone, and uh, it has uh, been ported to most of the architectures of today. Uh, some uh, remarks is that uh, it, it does not have a bytecode language. Normally, for a virtual machine, it's very common to have a bytecode. Uh, I don't know uh, why they did it. Uh, I mean, uh, using a bytecode makes it easier to do optimizations, like people of, of, of optimization and that like. Uh, but I think uh, they, they have done it because uh, they like to code in assembler. So instead of optimizing a bytecode, they optimize directly uh, in assembler and they optimize for all the different architectures. So they can like uh, uh, use the perks and uh, optimizations for each architecture. And uh, then it has no threads and no processes. Uh, that means that uh, yeah, you, uh, you only have uh, one process and you can spawn threads and you can spawn other processes. Uh, so that is the limitations. <coughs> and also, I mean, one of the reasons why they don't have uh, threads or processes is because if you choose them, then you have to make uh, the garbage collector a lot more uh, complex. And uh, some of uh, languages like Perl or Python have a global inter interpreter lock. And one of the reasons it's there is because of, of threads. Uh, so by not having that, they eliminate. Uh, <coughs> so what is a Node.js? It's a system uh, built on top of VH. So VH is such a virtual machine. Uh, Node.js is a system built on, on top of it. Uh, it has some uh, some extra things added. Uh, it adds a non-blocking EO library. Uh, it uh, makes it possible to do system calls. Uh, and it includes uh, whole HTTP, uh, HTTP uh, libraries and uh, it includes a uh, um, module system and uh, other things. Uh, but uh, these are the main uh, things it includes. Uh, the best thing about Node.js is that it, uh, it's a very good fit for building comments because of its non-blocking nature. And I will uh, shortly speak about why uh, why it's important for servers to be non-blocking, at least if you're doing commit. And uh, it, it has a very small uh, footprint, and uh, it has already a com community built around it uh, that, that, are, that are pushing the development forward. <coughs> so why uh, would you care for building servers that are non-blocking, or applications that are non-blocking? Uh, here we see uh, two graphs. Uh, that are monitoring uh, request per second and uh, memory usage. And here we see uh, NG NGNX, which is a Rus Russian uh, non-blocking server, which offers uh, high performance. And Apache, uh, which is a popular open source uh, uh, server. They are both open source, by the way. Uh, but uh, NGNX is not blocking Apache is uh, threaded. Uh, so what happens? Uh, first we see uh, the performance. NGNX uh, performs a lot better uh, than, uh, than Apache. And uh, its uh, performance as concrete uh, connections get added uh, is uh, pretty stable compared to Apache. Uh, and if you look in uh, memory usage, you can see that the NGNX's memory usage is almost static while uh, Apache's grows. And uh, the reason why this uh, happens is because it's uh, expensive to spawn uh, threads. And uh, uh, a non-blocking server does uh, not have threads. It has a, a event, loop, event loop that handles the connections. And uh, it, uh, uh, the one thread per connection does not scale at all for Comet servers, because in Comet servers you have to have a a connection open, or many connections concurrently open. So this is why it's very important for uh, future web servers to be uh, non-blocking. <coughs> so why uh, should we uh, care about uh, JavaScript and, uh, and uh, non-blocking? Uh, I think uh, one of the major points is that uh, events are very natural for JavaScript and uh, they are widely used. 
uh, they are used at uh, events in browsers and uh, closures or uh, anonymous functions are a natural part of JavaScript. So if we see just uh, in the browser how this is used, uh, this is basic, basically adding an event uh, with a, an, uh, or a closure here. And uh, I mean, uh, this is natural for every JavaScript programmer. And uh, this is the kind of coding you need to do if you want to build a scalable uh, uh, web services. <coughs> and uh, here we see a simple uh, hello world using uh, Node.js. And uh, if you know JavaScript, then uh, this would just be natural for you. Uh, uh, in the top, we import uh, a sys module and HTTP module. And then uh, we create a server. And uh, as a first argument, we, uh, uh, we put a connection handler. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, and, uh, in here uh, we uh, we use the normal, I mean uh, the known set timeout function to delay the response. Here, uh, the great thing about this is uh, that it's uh, non-blocking, so you can uh, spawn uh, uh, thousands of of these, and you will use very little memory and uh, and. Uh, very little CPU. While if you did this shredded, it would probably be very costly. Uh, yeah, and uh, we can uh, do a demo of this. Uh, so the when you install Node uh, Node.js, it uh, comes with a. Uh, it's yeah, it comes. Uh, can you put the font larger? Uh, Uh, so here we have started our server that runs the hello world uh, code and then if we go in the browser we can see that uh, it, wa it waits for two seconds and then it outputs uh, hello world so it's uh, very simple <coughs> And uh, uh, this is pretty ch central uh, thing in Node.js is uh, that uh, it follows this uh, design philosophy. It's that uh, all uh, access to this network or another processes is done via callbacks, so it's uh, event-based. And uh, if you do this. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, you can do this in uh, Node.js, but it's, uh, you shouldn't do it. Uh, this is the right way to do it. And uh, it, it's basically using uh, uh, callbacks. And uh, the reason is that uh, this is blocking and this is not blocking. So if you do this, uh, then, uh, uh, then your event loop uh, will be stalled. And uh, yeah, then you can't scale anymore. Uh, so events in uh, Node.js, uh, uh, all events uh, or all everything that uh, emits events uh, is an instance of a process event emitter. And uh, we can see here that uh, a server is an event emitter and we can add uh, listeners to it. So here we add a listener uh, that uh, listens uh, when our connection is uh, created. And, uh, a promise is a special event emitter that uh, can either return success or error, uh, but uh, it can uh, return both. And here we see an example where we do some system uh, calls, uh, and uh, where we have uh, a promise here, uh, and here uh, we add a callback on success and an error uh, handler. Uh, so uh, now we are going to talk, uh, I mean I have given a brief uh, introduction to Node.js and uh, I think uh, it will, be, I, I hope it is natural for every JavaScript programmer. Uh, and now I will speak about Comet and uh, Ajax and I think that uh, yeah, Ajax is uh, an outdated technology and uh, I think uh, Comet is the new, uh, <coughs> is the new thing. And uh, what it can be used for 
or what comment can be used for is uh, real-time.